It's the big national story of the day, and we wanted to give you some more perspective on it with our Homeland Security and Military Analyst. President Obama is apologizing for a U.S. counterterrorism operation that left two Al-Qaeda hostages dead, and an American aid worker is one of them. Paulo Sandoval lays the scene before, uh, for us before we get to that analysis. A statement of deep apology from the nation's commander-in-chief. I take full responsibility for all our counterterrorism operations including the one that inadvertently took the lives of Warren and Giovanni. I profoundly regret what happened. President Obama pulled back the curtain on previously classified U.S. counterterrorism operations that targeted an al-Qaeda compound in January. Several U.S. officials tell CNN U.S. military drones were used in the strikes near the Afghan-Pakistani border. Two Americans who were senior al-Qaeda operatives were killed in the attacks, so were two hostages. Italian national Giovanni Laporto and American doctor Warren Weinstein. The 73-year-old aid worker was kidnapped by al-Qaeda in 2011. And we do believe that the operation did take out dangerous members of al-Qaeda. What we did not know, tragically, is that al-Qaeda was hiding the presence of Warren and Giovanni in this same compound. Dr. Weinstein's wife, Elaine, is expressing her disappointment with both the U.S. and Pakistani governments in a prepared statement. She blames her husband's kidnappers, though, saying, quote, those who took Warren captive over three years ago bear ultimate responsibility. I can assure you that he would still be alive and well if they had allowed him to return home after his time abroad, working to help the people of Pakistan. The White House is launching a review of the strikes. So are lawmakers. They hope to reduce the risk of more innocent bloodshed. Reporting in Washington, I'm Polo Sandoval. Dr. Dave McIntyre joins us again. He's been writing and teaching national security for 25 years. The former dean of the National War College and now serves at the Homeland Security School, uh, Homeland Security Department at the Bush School, teaching Homeland Security there. And he's a fellow at George Washington University and their Center for Cyber and Homeland Security. The president called it a fog of war. Uh, tragic in this case, obviously, that it happened. But you agree this is just sadly sure. something that's going to happen? Sure. The truth is that we've gotten very good at this. Our intelligence and our operators have become, have, are much better at this than they were 10 years ago. Uh, the uh, term that was used over and over in the press conference was persistent surveillance or continuous surveillance. That means they had eyes on this target for a considerable period of time, whether it was satellites or somebody they paid on the household staff. And uh, it's just impossible to know everything in war. World War II, we sunk a transport with hundreds of American uh, uh, POWs on board because we had, because the intelligence does, just didn't indicate correctly and it's it's a hard it's war's a hard business but to your point though if this was under surveillance for a mm -hmm. quote unquote substantial period of time mm -hmm. is it really possible there're going to be some people i think that say man if we had them looked at for mm -hmm. a while two people inside there how didn't we know yeah there's no way to know <clears throat> who's inside a building especially when some of the captives i know nothing about these captives some of these captives are kept in very confined spaces for months years on end. I think we're going to learn some things about Sergeant Bergdahl when he comes out. Whatever the reason he, def he defected and went to the other side, he was treated very harshly. We're going to find what it, about people being locked in small spaces, and there's no way to know who's deep inside inside house. We're using a lot of drones along this Afghan-Pakistan mm -hmm. border and in so many places in the world, really. Is this an opportunity? Is this an instance where people who are against the use of drones are going to call this out and say this is a prime example why they shouldn't be relied upon? Or, or is this just, again, a tragic People, as minors, uh, people who are against, yeah, the people who, who are opposed to drones will continue to be opposed to drones. But the uh, conversation has changed dramatically in the last five to six years. When we say drones, we're not talking about a single aircraft. We're talking about a huge network of thousands of people, everything ranging from satellites to, as I said, a spy on the household staff all the intelligence that's pulled together. And so we're not just talking about one aircraft launching it. And secondly, we've worked very hard about, uh, for example, what munition we use. There was a time 10 years ago we used a 500-pound bomb. Today we use a munition might be fired from miles away that's uh, the size of a hand grenade. And finally, uh, uh, we've worked very hard in establishing legal precedent. Uh, for this kind of activity. Uh, I, there's a whole series of checklists, which I think were covered very well in the White House briefing today, that, uh, that our intelligence agencies worked down before they allow the execution of a mission like this. I, I think everybody sat, checked all the blocks. This is just one of those things, you, it's, uh, it's sad, but um, I mean, the good news is clearly they got 
they hit what they shot at, sure. which was in, in uh, Al Qaeda target. Sure, and I said minor, I should say rare instance in yes. this case. Yes. Uh, as far as hostages go, obviously this is an Al Qaeda operation. Mm -hmm. Uh, we talked before this, this is becoming business for these terrorists. One of the horrible uh, um, developments of the uh, terrorism climate around the world has been that the hostage taking has become not just a matter of terrorists, but a matter, a matter of business. And so hostages are taken by Al Qaeda, by ISIS, uh, by a variety of different people, and they're sold, they're traded uh, from group to group in the hopes that they'll be able to get a higher price from someone else. International uh, hostages, other countries are buying their hostages back. Uh, we say that we we say that we don't, and so it's become a, it's become a business, a currency. It's a terrible eventuality, and and um, you know, God bless the intelligence agencies that have to make these difficult calls. And and hopefully we get uh, those other ones that are still out there home and Absolutely. don't have instances like this that we have to talk about further. Dr. McIntyre, appreciate it. Colonel McIntyre, thank you very much.